Hey, you don't pick your favorite gangster. Pick your favorite uh soldier that's in Iraq. It can happen to anybody. And we understand it as a motherfucking uh, collateral damage of war. And when we retaliate by putting a family through what we just went through, and we don't say, and nobody's saying shit about that. Nobody's saying, oh, we said, uh, hashtag RIP that family. It's still RIP hustle. RIP hustle. Everybody telling everybody, do what you gotta do, man. Have your business. Okay. So that nigga went home, told everybody what happened, and they told him, handle your business. Can no one see the pattern? Two people that had nothing to do with this were murdered. And nobody gives a fuck. Because I guess no one's making a connection that those are black people. The police officers that kill niggas for no reason. Their families are never harmed. They're never harmed. It's understood. Oh no. Oh hell no. Oh hell no. That's fucked up, man. Fucking racist. $100 bills and I want to invite you to a free training that shows you how I went from $10 an hour to $10,000 a month with my online business text cash to 301-273-1238 I'll see you on the inside go when I'm speaking go. listen close rolling up blowing down on the barley ghost writing to actually be in the artist either or they say one of the hardest I sample now because I had to alarm him you want a feature 10 is what I'm a charger designer dying that's all over my garments Long Island sipping blowing no ganja run it up and get a crib for my mama television I can't focus on drama a lot of goals to accomplish I promise never boast this to me being honest bass beating slapping hard as the Honda real nigga image cannot be tarnished niggas trying but they can't escape karma hating on the nigga make them go Harder, the inspiration made me jump in the water. Breathe. Never towered on my niggas. Never froze on my niggas. The bottom gold on these niggas. Um, look here. Uh, this Saturday, April 6th, I will be in Mobile, Alabama, and I will be accepting volunteers. I'll be at the Mobile, Alabama uh, fairgrounds uh, for Spring Fling, and I'll have my own tent out there, my own booth, whatever like that. Um, but if you're going to volunteer, I'll meet you before we go in. We'll all go in at one time. We'll all be uniform and shit like that. We'll be out there promoting the Men to Movement, actually doing the work, actually having feet on the ground. I will be going live this Saturday also to show y'all all the shit. For the volunteers, get in my inbox, either one of them, um, and hit me up. Um, I'll do a, a short vetting process, and then, you know what I'm saying, it'll be all good. I'll, I'll give you the details that you need. Um, we'll be passing out flyers, bumper stickers, t-shirts, um, keychains, and just uh, the works, whatever like that. Uh, we'll have food and drinks out there provided. Um, but that'll be April 6th. Make sure you hit me up about that. Um, don't, if you're not, if you're, if you're in New York and you want to make it, but you can't, you don't have to tell me, hey man, I wish I could make it, but I can't. Just, you know what I'm saying, let my inbox breathe for the people who are, are going to be here. All right, um, welcome back to the Big Facts Podcast. I'm Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation, and this is, and, of course, the Men 2 movement. If you have not signed the change.org petition for Men 2, or if you not have not donated to the Men 2 GoFundMe, I don't know what the fuck you got going on. You know what I'm saying? If you have not subscribed to the Men 2 Podcast, I don't know what the fuck you got going. On the Men 2 Podcast this week, um... You will have some real life accounts. I take calls from uh, men who have been through horrendous situation, like actually been locked up for rape, and then the bitch come out and say, uh, he didn't do it. I was just mad. 
the nigga finally get released and nothing happened to the bitch. These are the horror stories. A bitch called domestic violence on the nigga. Nigga never put his hands on her, but now this nigga, his, his uh, fucking probation is violated for even having that type of situation going on. This is the type of shit that you're going to hear on the Me and Two podcast. So make sure you subscribe. We will have one of the first accounts up this week. Um, and this is Are You Fucking Serious? Um, I want to talk about gangster shit, dog. Let's talk about this gangster shit, my nigga. Shit. Man, this gangster shit going on. Nipsey got murdered. A nigga, you know what I'm saying, walked up and stood over a nigga. One nigga came up like, nigga, you know what the fuck you said to me, nigga? Hit him and all his homeboys. Hit him and all his fucking homeboys around that bitch. That's what rap these rap niggas talk about. Nigga, I walk step down on nigga, fuck nigga. Lay everything down, nigga. That's that gangster shit, nigga. The fuck? We don't, we, nigga, we won't let no nigga in this game if he ain't about that type of gangster shit. And this nigga rap. And he was really retarded on some shit. He a real mental patient. What happens is Nipsey telling nigga, hey, man, you can't be around here, man. You really ain't told on a nigga. That's a whole nother thing for you, you know what I'm saying, lame-ass niggas on YouTube that you don't understand. You think just because a nigga cooperated with the police that he's a hoe. But it will be a nigga who cooperated that's in prison that will really, you know what I'm saying, fuck you over the bad way. Everybody know that he didn't told, but nobody says nothing because this nigga is real. You know what I'm saying? The reason why that nigga told probably is because he know that nobody can't do shit to him. He know there ain't going to be no repercussion because he's the, he's the fucking hitter. He's the fucking killer. He's the nigga who do the fucking, you know what I'm saying, work for. When niggas pay to get something done, he's the one they pay. So when he give up the nigga who sell dope, you know what I'm saying? He know that he coming home, niggas be mad, whatever like that, but nigga ain't gonna say nothing. Nigga, I got bad as fuck, nigga. You don't do nothing but sell dope. It's levels to this street shit. You know what I'm saying? So you hear snitch, you just think, I nigga, but you won't know. That's that's how nigga know you ain't never been nowhere. It's, e it's so easy to say all this shit from YouTube, you know what I'm saying? But if you ever had feet on the ground, you will respect every man. You don't just walk up and just slap. No, it don't, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. I'm telling you, it don't work like that. Some gangster shit went down, and we have proven through our actions that black life is the least valuable life in the United States. One Crip gang member dies. Store, no, a business of uh, gang... Rapper, gang member, business owner, movie star, gets killed, and two other people die in relation to it. They're saying that the nigga who, the Eric Holder nigga, two of his family members were killed yesterday or today, whatever like that, behind this, obviously, you know what I'm saying, behind this shit right here. So what they proved is, nigga, if we fuck with a nigga enough, if the world fuck with a nigga enough, nigga, we'll go murder your family members, nigga, if we can't get you, nigga. We ain't going out like no hoe ass niggas, nigga. What the fuck you think this is, nigga? Nigga show how gangster they is. But by showing how gangster they were, they just proved What the fuck are they doing, bro? While showing how gangster this shit is and how gangster niggas is, they prove the point of black life not mattering in the least. Because, see, we've had these opportunities before. Except the suspect wasn't a black person. The suspect 
wasn't black at all. So going to get the family member of someone, of the person who killed our loved one, no longer was an option. But as long as our murderer is black, we can go avenge in any way we see fit. But if our murderer is any other race, we got to just hold our signs up. We got to hold our signs up and put in our hashtag and write a mean ass message. You motherfucking racist motherfucker. You motherfucking racist motherfucker. Nigga, die. Die, nigga. Die. That kind of shit. But as long as it's Eric Holder, a Rai Rai, a Lee Lee, Rock, uh, Debo, Big Steve, as long as it's them niggas, we can go and just, nigga, I get your mama, your niece, your nephew, your son, nigga, I don't give a fuck about nothing, nigga. But when Trayvon Martin gets killed, not even by a police officer, we got a motherfucking, we, nigga, ooh, nigga, ooh, nigga. George Zimmerman, like, how, how was he, he's, he's, that's, that's gangster. That's gangster. I walk around with this fire. I let any nigga have it. You niggas just, from my knowledge, you just killed a motherfucking child. Y'all didn't mind killing a fucking child in retaliation. So what's to say George Zimmerman, his folks, some of his folks wasn't harmed by a nigga and he was going to get his revenge. You understand what I'm saying? If we're talking about revenge, it will never stop. Uh, Katrina Gills from the Conversation With Me podcast, make sure you go and subscribe there. She was talking about energy and I, I didn't really, you know, that, that I, I, I like to believe I'm, I'm spiritual, but with energy, I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant to it a, a lot. Energy, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, it's hard to, you know what I'm saying, for me to grasp, but in this sense, it, it, it'll be very easy to apply that, that theory. Revenge. A life for a life. If we believe in gangster shit, we can't put the guns down because gangster shit is a eye for an eye. Righteous shit is I'm not going to say that. Gangster shit is an eye for an eye. You did this to me, I'm going to do it to you. And if they're on that same gangster shit, they have to give that same thing to someone else. And they have to give that same thing to someone else. And it keeps on going, keeps on going until it hits your daughter, until it hits that person's mother, until it hits that person's grandmother. And so if we look at revenge as if it was the rage disease from World War Z or, or any zombie movie you've seen, um, uh, uh, 28 Days Later, if we look at revenge and hate as that rage disease, the people with the rage or with the hate and with the revenge in their heart can't wait to pass that energy on to someone else. Not because it's going to cure them, but because I want someone else. Misery love company. I want someone else to feel what I'm feeling. And, and so in that case, you would hate the per you would hate people that smile because it reminds you of who you once were. And once again, you're envious of that. So go back to jealousy. And so this whole thing is a whole big ass circle. But before I, you know, that's 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 too deep. We on some gangster shit right now. Let's get gangster. What Eric Holder did was gangster. No doubt about it. Nipsey hustling them, calling him a snitch, get the fuck from around here. That was gangster. 
Only gangsters give a fuck about snitch niggas, dishonorable niggas, because you dishonor the street. Gucci, Puma, Nike wouldn't kick no nigga out because he told on some niggas. They don't accept anyone's money. Anyone is welcome. But a gangster. Fuck you doing around here, nigga. The snitch say, nigga, oh, so you think I'm a hoe? And you know I got bodies? You think I'm a hoe, but you think I told... I got something for you. Ain't that what gangsters do? You disrespect me, I'm gonna leave and come back with something. Like, when I come back, you better be gone. Oh, you ain't gone? Let me show you something. The same thing that Eric Holder did to a person that we love, Cujo then did the bell. Uh... Lil' Fire and them did, you know what I'm saying, Ray Ray. But we didn't have all this. So if we're going to uphold and, and try to get something good from this whole situation, then we would say Nipsey Hussle is the last time that this going to take place. From this point on, because we've seen it now, because I've seen it with my own eyes, I, I saw what I've never seen in my whole life. So that's what happened to my son. So that's what happened to my daughter. So that's what happened to my nephew. So that's what happened to my daddy. I don't want any other family to have to go through that. That was, I will never be the same again. After seeing someone be so reckless with a person's life. Not because he's fucking famous. Or is that the only reason you gave a fuck? Because we can send that video to India and, and put different names on it and they don't know who the fuck that is and they'll just think it's another death video that you see on YouTube. Just think about how many times you've seen someone die on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Seen someone get shot, but it didn't hit like this, did it? You keep hearing people say, this one hit different, this one hit different. Why? Why? If all black life matters, if that's what we're saying, all black life matters, why in the fuck is this any different than anyone dying over gun violence? If this is what it took for motherfuckers to say, God damn, this, we got to stop this shit, then this was a good thing. Just like with the XXX uh, uh, situation. But as we can see, this didn't stop a motherfucking thing. Niggas didn't get allergic to their pistol. Niggas started shining them bitches even more. Ain't that crazy? For as disgusted as we were at seeing this life be extinguished, it motivated us and justified us in doing the same thing to somebody else. What if, what if Nipsey was killed because of, um, because his cousin, because his cousin murdered somebody? We would still be sad, right? So that same exact thing, because only thing that we care about is that Nipsey died. I don't give a fuck what he did. Why the fuck did you kill Nipsey? But niggas have been killed for far less than that. And we accept it. We accept it as that's the street. That's what it is. Nipsey called a nigga a snitch. And a nigga came back and did what any street nigga would do. Any real street nigga is not going to let you call him a snitch. Just because everyone's saying that he a snitch. That don't, we don't know that he snitched. What are you supposed to do when a nigga call you a snitch to your face? And tell you to get off his shit. If you a gangster, what are you supposed to do? So we got to decide, like, what don't we like here? Do we not like gangster shit? Or we don't like gangster shit when it happens to somebody we like? Because if that's the case, we need to tell everybody that we love to get the fuck out the street. Because I don't want this to happen to you. And this is what happens in the street. You can't pick and choose what gangsters you like. This isn't fucking Marvel or X-Men where all the superheroes just get knocked down but they always get back up. Maybe except Wolverine. 
This is real fucking life. You don't pick your favorite gangster. Pick your favorite uh, soldier that's in Iraq. It can happen to anybody. And we understand it as a motherfucking uh, collateral damage of war. And when we retaliate by putting a family through what we just went through, and we don't say, and nobody's saying shit about that. Nobody's saying, oh, we said, uh, hashtag RIP that family. It's still RIP hustle. RIP hustle. Everybody telling everybody, do what you gotta do, man. Have your business. Okay. So that nigga went home, told everybody what happened, and they told him, handle your business. Can no one see the pattern? Two people that had nothing to do with this were murdered. And nobody gives a fuck. Because I guess no one's making a connection that those are black people. The police officers that kill niggas for no reason. Their families are never harmed. They're never harmed. It's understood. Oh no. Oh hell no. Oh hell no. That's fucked up, man. Fucking racist. But when some gangster shit happened to a gangster for doing some gangster shit, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? I understand. I understand that most of y'all on this computer are not in the streets. You don't understand the streets. All you have is just a overview. You're in the stands. You, hope, you eat your popcorn and you've always stayed away from the streets. Like I said, the most you've ever done is go down there and buy you a quarter or something like that. You, you, you buy dope from real trap niggas. And even those niggas you bought the dope from, them niggas was hoes. Because the real scary niggas, they, they, they not going to be out like that. Like they really, them is the one, like the real boogeyman type niggas. You never met them. If you ever did, like you... You scared of niggas that look like them. So I understand, you know, uh, but this is real life. You like your family will never have to go through this shit. You will never have a loved one killed from gun violence. Someone that you were close to. And even if you have, my nigga, that still don't make you like anything near a street nigga. At some point, we're either going to have to stop the hypocrisy by looking at it in the mirror, or we're just going to keep on crying, keep on hashtagging, and keep on destroying black families whilst the people on the top continue to laugh. And be entertained by our pain. And our confusion. And our stupidity. Our hypocrisy. If you look at all the hypocritical shit that we do throughout the day. Just on social media alone. But nobody nobody is going to look at that. Nobody, nobody really wants to look at it. People want to put it in a meme and, and, and everybody, oh, that's some real shit. But nobody truly wants to deal with one black man was killed because someone got mad. And then someone else got mad and killed two black people. Do you think it will stop there? Can we have a real conversation about actually stopping what's going on? Or do we want to continue to watch the game unfold and be surprised when someone gets tackled? Be surprised when someone catches a touchdown. This is all part of the game. Someone breaks an ankle. Someone break, get, gets hurt in the game. This is part of the game that they play. 
every boxer, every UFC fighter knows that there's a chance that I can die in this ring. Every parent knows that if my child plays football, there's a chance that my child can get very badly hurt. Brain damage. It's a part of the game. As, as we're looking at the gangsters, the only reason we were the only reason so many people fuck with Nipsey is because he was actually what rappers try to be. He was actually a and you don't become a gangster by just being a good nigga. No, you have to do shit. You have to hurt people. There is no gangster that's respected that has not hurt someone. And just because the person that you may have hurt didn't die and you were able to um, ask them for forgiveness doesn't mean that you're forgiven. You understand when you tie this rag around your head, you're not rep I'm not representing AO no more. I'm representing this set. So a person who doesn't like this set can get points and maybe get some um, closure by closing my fucking casket. Yeah, just killed that fucking... That nigga, uh, just killed that crypt nigga. Just killed that blood nigga. Just killed that... They don't give a fuck what your name is. Or are we saying that niggas don't die in gangs anymore? What the fuck are we talking about? I don't want to talk about all uh, opening up a, uh, 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 but I guess maybe we can talk about opening up a store in the hood. Because if this store was not ran by a gangster, then this wouldn't happen. If, if this was a Nike store, Cameron, Cameron owns a McDonald's somewhere in New York. He won't tell people which one because he knows that niggas hate niggas. As soon as he tell people there's a Cameron store, now the people that hate Cameron. You know what I'm saying? Now you got all, all this bullshit going on. So I'm just going to, I don't have to put my face on this shit. It's a gangster that owns this store. So this this store is upheld to a gangster's standard. We don't have no snitches around here. Well, you have a store that's in the hood where street shit happens. And snitching is some street shit. That's some gangster shit. Just because it's not... People don't like it. Doesn't mean that it's not part of this shit. They call it cooperation. They have an actual code for this shit now. Informants. You can work with us. We can put you on payroll. This is a part of the game. If it wasn't part of the game, then as soon as you snitch, you would die. And that doesn't happen. It's niggas who have snitched right now who have told that have all the dope and all the hoes. And niggas still buy dope from them. This nigga walked up that bitch, walked home, and walked back with a gun. And was not home. Snitches are very tolerant fucking rated. Niggas will throw a snitch a fucking party when he get home. So, the, the main thing that I want to point out in this whole situation is, I fuck with Nipsey, salute him. Black man doing something good. That's why I see a black man doing something good. The only reason, the only reason I would talk about Nipsey over Ray Ray and burying him is because this is where you're gonna come to, and I need I, I need to enlighten some people about some things. What you what you just witnessed with this situation, watching the surveillance tape, and I and I advise people to watch it, so that now next time next time you hear a nigga talking about walking down on some like we don't do drive-bys, we do walk-ups. That's what he's talking about. For those of you who have no idea what these rap songs actually mean and what they're saying, why a nigga that's been in the street may have a hard time listening to a faggot like Skinny from the Nine or Lil Pump say shit like that. Because you've had this type of shit. See, this is the type of shit that come in your mind when niggas say that shit, but when a fucking faggot can... It's like, what the fuck? But this is what niggas are talking about. So if you hear a, a, a real street nigga talking like this, no matter how much you like him, understand 
that is some niggas, just like Nipsey's niggas, that are out there wanting revenge. But also understand that if it's in, if any other race does anything to a nigga, a nigga will grab a stick with a piece of paper on the end of it. But if a nigga does something to a nigga, a nigga will grab a stick with a flashlight or a fucking bayonet on the end of that motherfucker. It's just it, same shit, different sticks. And I, I wonder about that. I wonder about that because we've had a lot of murders happen on camera. Body camera. But nothing's happened. But this, this murder on camera, oh no, we got to do something about it. So much to where we don't even got to kill a nigga who did it. We'll kill his family members. And I have an issue with that shit. Because not only were those black people, those were innocent black people. Just like the fucking innocent black people that were killed by the fucking police. What the fuck is the difference between you and them? They felt like they was cleaning up the streets. They were doing that shit for a reason. You were doing that shit for a reason. Until we start cherishing black life like we do white life, we'll continue to be inferior. Big Facts Podcast. I'm A.O. Conseco. Make sure you hit that PayPal. I appreciate all the support. All the support I appreciate. I'll see y'all in a minute. Make sure you hit that GoFundMe too. Love.